What an odd coincidence! David Susha has been almost unanimously proclaimed the most impeccable and true to Christie's portrait of Hercule Poirot out there on screens. He had those properly groomed, the best in England moustache, an egg-shaped head, his manners and all the tiny bits of presence were those of the legendary Belgian detective. And yet there is one thing not visible from the first sight that unites the actor and his fictional character the most. It is their particular devotion and respect to the Christian faith and this way special attention to its key narration the Bible. If you are missing Hercule Poirot and his impersonation by David Suchet, then listening to his explicit, hours-long narration of the Bible with his deep, melodic, unrushed voice might be the so much needed, the sweetest music to your ears. It nourishes the nerves. You comprehend? By the way, if you'd like to learn more about the real prototype of Hercule Poirot and the actors that played him and other curious details from the Agatha Christie universe, then check out the videos from this playlist after watching this video. Suche began recording the, what would be then become the first full-length audio version of the Bible spoken by a single British actor back in 2013. He confessed that it was the biggest role in my life in terms of research. I love researching characters, and the Bible is the best piece of research in the world. No, no, Monsieur, not on there. There's always still so much more to do. But the clock it ticks. No? Such is the will of God. I guess it doesn't matter that much which faith you belong to or if you are really agnostic at all. It's definitely hard to disagree with such an idea, since the Bible as a standalone piece of art, if I may put it like that, is indeed often considered to be the unrivaled collection of life wisdoms and revelations that wasn't overthrown for the many thousand years. And yet nobody would say it's without error. I see the Bible, I hope, with a rational mind, Susha reckoned. I do not believe it's totally inerrant. I believe it was written by human beings, inspired by God. What it gives me is a lens through which I can view the world. Interestingly, the world-famous British actor David Suchet was born in 1946 and grew up in a Russian Jewish family without religion. God works in mysterious ways, as they say. In 1986, Suchet suddenly decided to read a hotel Bible. Tell me how many times you've stayed in hotels, opened the Bessa drawer, saw those Bible and then shut it down to never open again. He opened the book to the page with St. Paul's letter to the Romans and immersed himself in the ancient text. I read it as a letter that had just been sent to me through the post. By the time I got to the end, I found a world view that I had been looking for all my life. The prodigal returns. It was then, at the age of 40, when David Sushi became a Christian. Well, an Anglican, to be precise. Three years later, in 1989, he began filming on Poirot and got the first engagement to read the Gospel of St. John for an audio Bible, where leading British actors recorded different parts. Imagine the master tape was later lost in an office move. Already at that time, he knew that he wanted to do more. And I knew that my statement would be accepted because I am Hercule Poirot. As a performer, I wanted to use my voice, he says in the Bible accompanying notes. I wanted to record all the varied writings in the Bible in the hope that others might hear them. Indeed, reading aloud was one of the chief reasons why Suchet was so keen to take on the project. The Bible often speaks of hearing the word of the Lord, he says, and he wanted to know what it would feel like to listen to it as a whole, continuously, from beginning to end, in as many consecutive days 
as I was able. Suchet began the process of recording in June 2013 in between the final episodes of Poirot for ITV. Luckily, the recording studio was just a stone throw away from his London home. Before preparing his voice recordings, he tackled the text, book by book, reading commentaries to explore the historical context. I suppose it was like a huge Bible study. I would study at home for hours and hours. I would say three to four hours on every book before actually speaking it, so that I knew that I had underneath me a great confidence about it. I have always tried to do my best, you know. You do believe that, Hastings? How could I not? Suchet was particularly invested in pitch and tone of his reading. I was very surprised at how emotionally one could read the Psalms. Each one has a high emotional pitch of its own, whether it be anger or praise, poetry, imagery. They are full of emotion, and I read them like that. One of the passages he most enjoyed reading was Jesus' talk in John after the Last Supper, where he talks about himself being the vine and you the branches. That was very lovely to read, because I did it in a very soft, conversational style, very intimate, which is how I believe it would have been done. I love that. Other sections inevitably were more challenging. You really need a jug of ice-cold water next to you when you are reading Chronicles, to pour over your head rather than to drink, because it's the most difficult thing. Name after name after name. Suchet eventually discovered the proper key to such books. In order to understand them, one has to put oneself in the shoes of the chronicled individuals. I realized that every single name was alive, a human being, and that made it easier. All in all, he spent more than 200 hours recording every word in the New International Version Bible, and there are over 75,000 words in it. All that turned into a 78-hour-long audio version, which was released in 2014. The actor admitted that the project straightened his faith enormously, despite its challenges. The hardest passages to read were the ones on genocide, of course. But as humans, we will never fully understand God. It takes faith to accept Him and His decisions. When the moment comes, I will not try to save myself, but humbly offer my soul to God and pray for His mercy. It is for Him to decide. The release had an enormous success. Sushi said that he was particularly overwhelmed by its positive reception. People's reactions are so humbling. I don't think about it, he said. Sushi's TV journey in the elegant shoes of Hercule Poirot lasted for 24 years and 70 episodes and had a global following of 600 million. When he finally completed the recording of the Bible, he confessed that it finally finally fulfilled his 27-year-old ambition, which began that day in the hotel room in 1986. During its first years of release, it sold more than 450 million copies. In true Christian spirit, Sushi donated the fee for his work to the charity. Do you think God will forgive me? Of course he'll forgive you. You're a good man. The best a fellow could know. There is a further correlation between Poirot and the Odia Bible, in that both are cover-to-cover -cover renderings of extensive works. Well, Suchet was always vocal about his desire to film every single Christian novel and short story in the series before hanging up his moustache. So, both missions have been completed. And if you loved Actor's performance in Agatha Christie's Poirot, try to listen to his thoughtful narration of the Bible, the book that opens its depth more and more with every new reading. See you in my other videos. Bye!